Welcome to the latest drought and ENSO monitoring video presentation. We'll take a look at current conditions and provide an outlook for this coming year. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist here at National Weather Service in San Diego. The first thing we're going to look at is how warm it's been across our region. We know it's been dry. Here are some of the numbers in the upper left for San Diego, Riverside, and Santa Ana. But take a look at temperatures. San Diego is the ninth warmest as of March 15th. Riverside third and first warmest winter period since October 1st for John Wayne Santa Ana. How does this look on a map? Temperature departure from normal since October 1st or the start of the wet season. You can see all of California is at least two to four degrees above normal, especially on the coast where a couple areas are approaching five degrees above normal in Southwest California. This is an average of high and low temperatures. How about across the country? We hear about the polar vortex that has brought unusually cold winter conditions. Well, from December through February, that was the case. Much colder than normal air across the Great Lakes region. And you can see the bullseye of warm air across the southwestern part of the United States or all of California. What's causing this? Departure from normal. This is the jet stream. And basically an upper level ridge of high pressure or a split, a kink in the jet stream has caused the jet stream to lift way north into Alaska and then carve southward towards Salt Lake City and bottom out across the Great Lake region where the coldest air has been allowed to come down from northern Canada. This ridge of high pressure since October 1st, as shown here, departure from normal, severely departing from normal and very persistent through the entire winter, virtually blocking most of our storms except for a couple that managed to come through like February 28th and March 1st. What has this meant? Well, now we are in an extreme drought across most of the state. Exceptional drought in the central part of the state. And all the way down to San Diego, you see the extreme drought in red shown here. So this winter is the exclamation mark on top of dry winters that we've had really over the past three years. What's the change in the past year? Well, big changes along the California coast where drought has significantly uh, increased or worsened in conditions across the California coast and the northern Sierra Nevada. What kind of precipitation are we looking at here? Well, just the winter months, December through February, again, mostly two storms, one in December and one in late February, ended up ranking number four for San Diego at Lindbergh Field. So the fourth driest when you just look at the core of winter, December through February. The month of February, numbers are shown here, and more remarkably are the numbers since July 1, so the start of the California water year. Look at Riverside and John Wayne Santa Ana, eight inches below where they should be. Well, the drought is not just this past year. Take a look at three-year precipitation since January 2011. On the left are the amounts at selected locations during the three-year period from January 2011 to present. The three-year deficit in the middle in red. Take a look at some of the numbers. Santa Ana, John Wayne area in Orange County, nearly two feet below where it should be. That's about two seasons of precipitation lost. You also see about two feet at Palomar Mountain and Idlewild, two feet of water. San Diego Lindbergh Field doing the best with a foot, but still that's a season of precipitation lost. And even out in Palm Springs, nearly the same amount with about two seasons of precipitation lost due to the three year running deficit. All right, what has this meant? This lack of precipitation this year for snowpack in the critical regions of Northern California in the Sierra Nevada. As shown here, very little snowpack below 7,000 feet as of today. Above 7,000 feet, 10 to 30 percent of normal. That's for the snow water equivalent and the snowpack. Above 8,000 feet, you're around 25 to 50 percent of normal water storage and snowpack. Above 9,000 feet, about a half of what we should be at. So values significantly below where they should be, which 
basically affects our upcoming spring and summer runoff into the reservoirs. What are the reservoirs doing? Well, already the reservoirs are much below normal. The big reservoirs up north, you can see, are about 60% of where they should be. Blue is where they're at now. Red line is where they should be on historical average. How about that precipitation for this winter? Well, it seemed like it just rained a few weeks ago. For the past 30 days, here's the rainfall across California. These amounts are significant, but really not excessive. You can see far northern California, precipitation slightly above normal, and some of the mountains of southern California, really thanks to one storm. How about the water year since October 1st? Well, here's a look at the precipitation and the percent of normal. Quite a deficit, large area over the entire state, really all of the west, in the orange shade. The orange shade is 25 to 50 percent of normal. How does this rank? Well, when you go all the way back to October through February, you can see most of the state, this is the top or the bottom 10% of precipitation compared to normal. Some locations, as shown in red, are in the record territory. Virtually the entire state is in the much below normal precipitation of the lowest 10%. Let's take a look at statewide precipitation. California as a whole, it averages about 16 inches when you average numerous stations together. Right now, we are at six and a half, basically at the bottom of all years. You can see the early 90s and 76, 77 were the only other comparable years. Six and a half inches for statewide precipitation across California. Of course, this is why our drought is so severe. All right, is there some relief? Let's take a view of Enso El Nino. That's basically monitoring the equatorial Pacific Ocean for warming of sea surface temperatures. Are we going to get an El Nino is the question. Currently, we are not in an El Nino. Water temperatures are a mixed bag, warm and above normal temperatures in yellow, the below normal temperatures in blue. There is the region we monitor in the equatorial Pacific and on average, it's much of this region is still a little bit below normal. How much below normal? Here are some numbers you can reference. Slightly below normal, but when we talk about one or two degrees Celsius in this region, it is significant. How about sea surface temperatures averaged over the past month? You can see that region has been largely a little bit below normal, which when you average it all together, comes out to about neutral conditions in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. Neutral conditions. What we are seeing, however, below the sea surface temperatures deep into the ocean is a reservoir of much above normal sea surface temperatures. Those are just below in the equatorial Pacific region. So, with that in mind and with our computer model forecast as shown here, we are expecting those conditions in the equatorial Pacific Ocean to warm and warm through spring and summer, reaching into the El Nino category as shown here. All right, how about some other years looking at it across the United States? Let's compare two similar El Nino years. This was 86, 87, very dry across California. And then the following year, dry across most of California except for the interior deserts. How about two more comparable El Nino events? Not too long ago, 2002, 2003 was basically normal for most of California and above normal for the North Coast. How about the most recent one that brought us basically out of our drought, our prior drought, that was 2009, 2010. That was a fairly wet year for the immediate coast, but overall average across California. How about two years of extreme? 2004, 2005 El Nino, really big rainfall numbers across all of the Southwest, including the California coast. And then look at 2006, 2007. That was the start of our most recent drought before this drought that we're currently in. And the state was pretty much dry despite the El Nino snow. We'll throw two more for you. Take a look at Northern California, early 90s. Precipitation was lacking significantly in key regions of Northern California. 
But look at 94, 95, very wet year with lots of flooding actually across California with a similar El Nino strength. And how about the drought of 76, 77? That started with an El Nino. It started with an El Nino. Very dry conditions across really all the West and especially Northern California. Then the following year, similar El Nino signal was in place with warm water temperatures. And look how wet California was and most wet Southern California. We take a look at another year here, 1968 to 69 El Nino, and we could see California was very wet that year. But the following year, with similar conditions in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, most of the state ended up being dry when you average it together. All right, why do we call El Nino wet then? Well, there are years where classic strong El Ninos have delivered significant precipitation to California, all of the state, and really most of Texas and into Florida, as shown here. These are picking on some of the big El Ninos, 82, 83, 97, 98. What happens when we remove a couple big El Ninos like 82, 83, 97, 98? Well, what we see on the left is all of them included. And then on the right, we see two-thirds of the state ends up becoming on the dry side as the dry spreads south. And the remaining signal is far southern California and into southern Texas and Florida, where the jet stream was tracking in those El Nino patterns. What's our outlook then? coming up for the next week or so. Well, there is a chance of some precipitation for California. We see it shown here for the middle of next week as the jet stream takes a dip. Should be above normal precipitation for that period in far northern California from about I-80 northward. And even here in Southern California, we should get normal amount, which means we should get some precipitation for middle of next week or the end of March. Temperature-wise, it looks like it will remain a little bit above normal with the cold air remaining anchored across northeastern United States. This outlook from March 26th through 30th. How about the precipitation temperature outlook for April through June, the spring outlook? This is a brand new release of the outlook, and the signal remains dry across really all the west coast and warm. Not uncommon to see dry weather and warm weather together, as we showed earlier in this presentation, with a dominance of an upper-level ridge of high pressure. And also with dry ground, the air mass tends to warm considerably more in those conditions. This is your latest outlook for spring into June.